Okay, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Wednesday Live Coffee Talk. I'm Michelle Quay, and I am a confidence and leadership coach, and I help women, women warriors to find their greatness within by letting go of that imposter syndrome that we all have. Today, I'm super excited because I have my guest, Brenna Payne, waiting patiently in the <laughs> background. And <laughs> she's here with me today. And she's going to be talking about how to be a mother like a champion. Uh, Brenna was a member of the US National Luge team for 15 years. In that, in that time, she trained and competed internationally, having won a silver and bronze in junior world championship and was a two-time national champion. Since retirement from sports, just from sports, she continued to be a mom. Uh, she became a mom and Brenna struggled with motherhood. She wasn't uh, showing up as a loving person, a uh, loving parent. Uh, she was always, uh, 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 she was always uh, so. So she was always angry and often yelled at her children. So she was not a happy mom. But one day she had an epiphany and realized that she could use a lot of the same skills that she had used and in becoming a successful athlete to become a great mom. So she started her whole whole goal creation, visualization, and self reflection daily, and doing things that actually start. Um, a lot of things that start to fall into place. So today she is a life coach for parents and Brenna helps other moms to find their path by teaching them how to use the same techniques. So without further ado, let's bring her on so that she can share how to be a mom like a champion. Welcome Brenna. Hi, thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. Good morning. I am so excited that you are here because I have a lot of mom friends. Like they, you know, during the pandemic, I remember waking up in the morning, uh, all I see is, oh my God, my kids is driving me crazy. They're in the background. I need to work. <laughs> so <laughs> this year has been hard on parents and, and honestly, especially moms, because we take on most of the mental load, the parenting load. Um, even if we work full time, we're taking most of that on and it's been a very tough year for moms. That's for sure. Yeah. So, um, you know, I'm so excited that you are here on the show because I think this is some, this is a topic that I've been wanting to bring to all the women in the group and also my friends, uh, perhaps, you know, from hearing all this through our coffee talk, um, they can actually walk away with something that they can use um, in their life that can be helpful to them. So yeah. I'm curious, before we start, you know, I always like to ask my guests, you know, how did you even start it all this? Like we all had a journey. So what was that journey like? Well, yeah. So, I mean, the, a huge part of my life and my background was being an athlete and being um, on the U.S. National Luge team. I started when I was 11 years old and by the time I was 15, I was traveling internationally, spending months at a time in Europe and racing in international races. Um, and because of the sport I was in, I actually met my husband. So it, it all like made me who I am today. Absolutely. There's no question about it. So that's a huge chunk of, of my life and my life story. And then, like you said in the introduction, I was... I became a mom after I retired from the sport and, you know, my mom had always told me, oh, don't worry, mothering will come naturally to you. And it just never, ever did. And I think a big part of it was that I was in, like I had postpartum depression and anxiety and I didn't know what to do about it. And I was working full time. So I'd leave my babies with a, a sitter or at daycare and I would come home tired from working all day. And it was just like, an, like you said, I was just an angry person and I didn't want to be that person. I don't think anybody wants to be that person. So uh, eventually I just came to this point in my life where I was like, something has got to change. This is not who I am. It's not the way I want to be. And I started to think like, how can I use what I used as an athlete as a mom. So I, like, I just started, you know, um, analyzing the way I was doing motherhood and 
things changed and I made things uh, like I started to be more consistent and thinking things through and it's made a huge change in my life. So that's, that's kind of where I'm at. I, I, I um, made these changes and I was actually speaking to a friend, my neighbor, who's a, who's also a life coach and this, um, and she's like, Brenna, you have got to bring this to other moms. They can absolutely use this. So that's kind of how I became a life coach for parents and specifically for moms. Mm -hmm. It's just how, so interesting how, uh, you, as you're describing the early motherhood, because right now I'm reading your book, it's called The Push. I don't mm. know if you heard of that book, but uh, it's written by Ashley Audrey. Okay. And so she's writing this book. It's a thriller and it's very different. So so we picked this book up um, in our book club. Um, okay. So that's the book club for all the women who comes in and every month we will read a book. So our current book is The Push. And this is what exactly it was talking about in the book also uh, about this motherhood. And for some reason, you know, I don't know about you, but you, there's that limiting belief of how a mother should be, how a mother would be. Well, yeah, you're just having a little uh, postpartum experience and, and you'll get over it. Mm -hmm. Things will come easy. How, how, have you noticed like the women that, or the parents that you're working with, mm -hmm. how do you help them to overcome that mindset of, no, this is not how it should be? Well, I think another, something that I do within my group, I have a Facebook group called Mother Like a Champion. Mm -hmm. And within that group, I introduce, like when, when new women join, I introduce them to the idea that we're all having a difficult time. Like, I think with the advent of social media, social media is amazing. It's a great way to reach out to people and make these connections. But at the same time, we as moms look at other moms' posts and they just look so per picture perfect and they're, you know, they're posed perfectly for their holiday photos and they are doing all these lovely Pinterest crafts. And when you see these things, you, you start to judge yourself and you're like, well, I can't pull things like that off. I'm, I must be a bad mom. Mm -hmm. And I know I felt like that. And I felt judged by other parents and other moms. And in reality, it's just this, um, this facade that I would say most moms experience that they, they put out the, the great things that are happening in their lives, but we don't talk enough about the hard struggles of motherhood. So that's number one. I have this group where I, I am very honest. I, even though I'm a, a parent coach, I'm a, a life coach for parents, things are not perfect in my house. And I am very open and honest with about that. And I, I open the door for other moms to be able to vent and talk about their frustrations and difficulties as well. So I think number it's so important to be open and talk about it. So well, you what are some of the hard things or hard struggles that people people are like kind of hiding or or tugging it under underneath the rug so that no one notices? Yeah, I think you know we all want to see we want to feel like great parents, and that's a lot of pressure on ourselves, right? Um, so I think I think people they find themselves yelling at their kids, they find themselves annoyed with their kids. I think a lot of moms go into motherhood thinking this is going to be this beautiful, lovely rainbows and butterflies experience. And in reality, it is exhausting. It's tiring. It, it is an amazing experience and I wouldn't give it up for the world, but um, it's, it, it's so exhausting and anxiety provoking and producing that I think a lot of times we let the anxiety get the best of us and we lash out at, on our children. And then we have this mom guilt afterwards that like, oh my gosh, I'm the only mom in the world who yells at their kids when in reality, that is not the case. And there are ways, like some of the things that I help my clients with um, to prepare your day so that you're, you're taking the first step in the day to having a good, calm, healthy productive day with your children. So I do a lot of the visualization. I, I used to do visualization as an athlete. So like picturing in my mind what I needed to do to be successful on my luge sled and to have fast times. Now I do visualization 
in the mornings before my kids get up and I actually imagine myself having healthy interactions with my kids and not yelling. And that sets my, me and my clients up for success. And it's been really great. Mm -hmm. Can you, is it okay if I ask if you do a little quick uh, demonstration of what that visualization would look like and maybe I can practice with you? Yeah, absolutely. So what I do for my, for my clients and for myself, like I really have them picture what they want their lives to be with their children to be eventually like picture your, your youngest child, 25 years old. How do you want your interaction and your relationship to be with them? And then I ask them, okay, if you're on, if you continue the trajectory you're on today, will that happen? Will you be, will you have that relationship with your child that you dream of? And I know for myself, I was not on the right trajectory because I was yelling at my children every day. I was angry. And I was thinking, I thought to myself, there's no way that I, they're going to want to spend time with me when they're adults, if we continue on this trajectory. So what I do for myself and for my clients is really talk about what what are the triggers for the, the moms? So, you know, whether it's like for me, my son uh, is famous for losing his shoes and that triggers me. It makes me so angry. I'm like, just take your shoes off at the door and you'll always find them. So in my visualization, I actually walk myself through some breathing exercises. So it's a record, it's an audio recording that I can put my earbuds in and I can listen to myself speaking. And it says, okay, now imagine Colin, we're trying to leave in the morning to go to school and you're late already and Colin can't find his shoes. And instead of being triggered and starting to yell, up, yell at him, imagine yourself taking a deep breath, pausing and speak like speaking kindly to him, get down on his level and look at him in the eyes and talk him through where his shoes might be or something like that. So I, it's kind of like having you actually close your eyes and imagine the scenario in your head because you've been through it a million times, but instead of having that huge reaction, which is just going to set him off and you off, you're going to enter fight, fight or flight it brings you back down and it helps you keep everyone out of fight or flight and you just stay calm and it, it makes a world of difference. Yeah. <clears throat> what comes up for me is um, I have this image. So, so uh, there, it, it's actually a funny story with visualization. <laughs> so I was uh, working with a colleague one day and then, <clears throat> so he keep losing his phone and we like it, when I'm doing the uh, clinical work as a pharmacist, I, we carry these uh, spectralink, they call it spectralink, so little phone that you have to uh, carry around so that the nurses can find you, your, your pharmacists can find you, your people can find you. And for some reason, this tech keep losing it or just forgetting it. And so we keep picking up the phone for him. So mm -hmm. we got so tired of it. And I had this visualization of you know, I'm going to do something about this. And either I will remind you, keep reminding you, or I actually got up and I had a scotch tape. I tape over the phone on his chat and said, here, now you won't be able to yeah. lose it. Yeah. But I suppose that you can't, you can't do that with shoes you call in, right? Right. right. Oh yeah, exactly. Yeah. But I totally agree with you. Visualization is so powerful that, you know, sometimes you sit with the clients and, and when you walk them through that process, it's like they never thought about what is possible for them until they quiet their mind and, and visualize and, and imagine, you know, what it would look like. And for yeah. some reason behind that becomes a driving force of taking actions. And how do I, how do I get myself and set my own path to achieving it? Exactly. Yeah. And so in the sport of luge, it's, um, it's a winter Olympic sport. It's an, it's on an ice track and on a sled all by yourself and you go 80 miles per hour. And so obviously you can think about how fast things are moving and, and you're just, you have to be able to do react quickly and, and keep things fresh in your mind. And really the only way you can do that is by practicing your run over and over in your mind. And I kind of think of parenting like that as well, like your kids, because their, their frontal lobes aren't developed in their brains and they are just going to continually 
throw new stuff your direction um, that you have to be ready to react to. And you have to be ready to react calmly because if you don't stay calm, things are going to blow up and it's just going to be a, a mess. So it kind of like, if you can visualize yourself keeping your calm and staying on top of things and being ready for whatever your kids hand you that day, you're going to have success. And it's, it's so similar to the, to doing so for the sports. I know uh, so many Olympic level athletes use visualization and it's study after study in sports psychology shows that it helps these athletes with their success. And there is no reason why visualization can't ha help moms or other, uh, you know, professionals in their careers as well. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so I think, you know, I kind of wanted to shift the gear of just a little bit, because I think, you know, in, as an athlete, you're, you're very familiar there with the idea of working with a coach. Mm -hmm. And so when we're shifting gear from, you know, talking to, to an athletic person who's used to the terminology of having a coach mm -hmm. and we totally understand what a coach means and, and what they can do for us. But when it comes to parenting, I, have you noticed that some, sometimes people are really um, having trouble getting over the hump that why do I need a coach in my life? Does that, does that tell me that I'm, I'm a big failure? Right. I, I would say, yeah, absolutely. I think coaching, I mean, it's, newer to a lot of people. Like some people have had life coaches for years and years and have huge success. Those are like early adopters and they get it and they've seen the success. So they don't need to have any more explanation. But I think there are so many um, other people who could use a coach and just don't understand what a coach does. And I think for, for the, those people, I would say like, where, where are your pain points in your life? And as a mom, like, as a mom, what are the things that you run into every single day? And they, and it's, it, it continually like is, you know, making problems for you. And then I'd say like, what you, what's been, what you've been doing isn't working, right? Because it's the same pro it's still, you know, coming up day after day after day. And as a coach, I can come in and I can look as an outsider, as from an outside perspective and give you feedback and, and kind of open your eyes to different options that you've never thought of before. And I think that's so important when you, as an athlete, you can think, you know, what the issue is, but until, but then your coach will come to you and say, oh no, it's something completely different and your eyes are opened. Well, it's the same thing as a life coach. Like you can, you can help open the client's eyes to new ways of looking at things, which I think is so important. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so for me, you know, I, I think my biggest uh, uh, aha moment when it comes to a coach is I, I've been having this uh, uh, body image issues about, mm -hmm. you know, where I was and how I look and what can I do. Um, right. And ever since I started to work with a coach, it was a, it was a, a fitness coach, you know, mm -hmm. but despite the fact it's still a coach who knows, who has an expertise in certain area that yeah. he can offer me the expertise and help me get over that hump. And so that mm -hmm. I don't, I don't feel as stuck. So I started to work with the coach and then it made me realize, oh, <laughs> I didn't know this is such a thing about like, oh, right. I've been stuck the whole 40 years of my life with no freaking reason. <laughs> right. I know that's how I felt like before when I, I was like, oh my gosh, my kids, like what, I can't believe I was uh, like doing this with my kids day in and day out, just being so angry. Like it was like a light bulb went off. Like we could have, we could have done this so much earlier, but I think like you said, you talked about a journey and we all have a journey. And I think, you know, the cool thing about coaching is there are people who have expertise in so many different things that there's no way we as uh, an individual could have an expertise on all those things. So why not reach out to a coach who is, you know, specializes in a specific area that you're having difficulty with, and they will help you figure things out much faster than you could ever figure out on your own, you know? Yeah. 
<clears throat> so now that you have the all the skills and you're actually helping other moms, um, other parents who's who's struggling with the same thing, do you still have these struggles in your life? <laughs> well, like I said, I am by far in a way not perfect. Like, and that's the thing I share with my my um my moms in my group is that like even if I, if I was perfect, which I'm not, um, my kids are still developing and they're still, like I said, throwing new things, my direction, like they go through different stages in their life. And, um, I absolutely can find myself triggered, but now I will be honest, I stop myself much faster and it's much like fewer and further between like the incidents are a, a lot less. So it's very exciting. And I think it's great for my relationship with my children and not only my children, but my, my partner, my husband, we have a better relationship now as well. Um, but I'm by no means perfect. And you will find that way. if you join my group, you'll find that I'm very open and honest about uh, the things my kids are throwing at me <laughs> every day. And, and I am going to put the group in the comment below so that people can find you, they can join your group this way, you know, people can connect with you. Um, I'm, I'm just really curious in terms of, um, <clears throat> so life is a struggle, life is a journey as we talked about it. Um, in terms of visualization, mm -hmm. where do you imagine yourself to be like maybe a year down the line, two years? <laughs> That's a great question. I, you know, I would love to be helping as many women as I can. I would love um, people to come to my group and just be able to interact every day, like just throw questions at me and I will help you. And um, I think having some group coaching um, would be great right now. I just do basically one-on-one -on -one coaching, but I think group coaching would be amazing because it would help more people all at once. And I think kind of having like, um, a master mind kind of format where we can all put our problems out there and help each other solve them using the techniques that I teach my clients would be amazing. So, um, that's what I would love. And, you know, as a mom, I would, love to continue um, making connections with my children and getting closer and closer to them. They're eight and 10 years old now. So it's crazy to think of my, my kids being two years older than they are now. It's um, really exciting to think about watching them grow and, and being so excited for them. It's so fun to think about. I, I love it. And, and I remember uh, when, when we first connected, or actually just recently, mm -hmm. I was reaching out because you shared the group with me. And I was thinking, well, I'm not technically a mom, but I do have a lot of mom friends. Can I join? <laughs> Always. <laughs> yeah, really, um, any, any, like, I think another thing with coaching is that a lot of the things I talk about anyone can use like a, like I have a, one of my clients is also a coach, actually. She's a, she's a fitness and nutrition coach. And, um, she's like, you know, I use these techniques in business, but I've never even thought to use them as a mom, which is so interesting, right? It's like, you can use these, you can use goal setting, visualization, and self-reflection as a mom, as an athlete, as a life coach, as a pharmacist or whatever, you know, it's so interesting. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I think uh, people get really uh, uh, hung up on the, on the terminology. So, oh, can I, can I be a mindset coach when I do business or can I be a business coach when I'm doing the mindset? I, if you really think about it, all these skills that coaches are sharing, it's transferable. So Absolutely. it means that transferable meaning that you can apply it to different area, different aspects of your life. And ultimately it, it all fit under a big umbrella of coach and life coaches um, because we're all talking about the kind of like the same thing yep. to get you to become the expert in your, your area, in the area that you want to focus on. Um, so you see and hear career coach, business coach, uh, mindset coach and life coach and all these different types of coaches. Wow. But all these skills are transferable. 
Absolutely. Yeah. And I would add that, you know, um, one of the things that I always encourage people to do is not just to get the freebies, really think about working with a coach, find mm -hmm. one that works for you, someone that can resonate with you, you like their energy, you like the stuff that they share, and not just getting bits and pieces from them, um, yeah. you know, here and there, because it, it's great that you're getting bits and pieces, but when you're really seriously thinking about um, um, taking yourself to a mastery level, you really need to think about what do you want to invest in yourself, and, right. and how much is your self-worth? Yeah. And not only like, so specifically for parent coaching, but again, like we just said, it's all transferable. If you invest in co me, like me or another parent coach, you are going to not only change your life currently, but you're going to change your relationship with your children. And then they're going to learn from you through modeling, you're, you're modeling this behavior, and then they are going to become the parent you were, and like, so you're investing in generations to come um, because everything you do, your kids are watching you and um, they're going to learn from you. And I think it's so cool and exciting to think about how, what you're doing now and investing in now is going to have like affect people, you know, our grandkids, which is so cool. And then their kids and grandkids too. So it's really yeah. And if we think back, like how, how the evolution or human evolution had come, I'm like super excited for like the new generation, Gen Z and the, uh, and the upcoming newer. And whatever comes after that. <laughs> yeah, whatever comes after that. <laughs> because there's a lot of us, you know, we're, we're actually waking up to realize that whatever the belief and culture that we, we used to grow up in and we used to believe is no longer whole, it's no longer serving us. And we're the one who start to waken up and, and start doing something about it and letting go of our these uh, limiting belief that's been um, sitting in, in our head for a long time. Right. And now we're teaching the new generation something brand new, something exciting. Go out there and be adventurous, be brave, be courageous. Yep. So yep. I'm like super excited about that. It's really exciting. It's super cool. <laughs> yeah. So what what would what advice do you have? Well, I know coaches don't give out advice, but you know, if we were to give advice or tips, let's put it this way: give tips for someone who's struggling right now, a mm -hmm. mom who's struggling right now in her in being a mom. Yeah. What advice do you have for them? You know, I would say um, number one: realize you're not alone because we are all struggling. This pandemic has thrown us all for a loop, and we're we're all scrambling to try to figure out the best way to uh, parent or work from home or, or whatever it may be. So know that you're not alone. Know that um, you can do some things for yourself that help you show up to be a better mom. So working on breathing, like breathing is so important as an athlete, breathing and it brings your cortisol levels down. And as a mom, same thing. If you work on really deep breathing, if in a very stressful situation, your cortisol levels will come down and you'll be able to shut off the fight or flight in your brain, those chemicals fight, running through your body and be the mom you want to be in the situation like, you know, that might be normally a heightened event. Um, just kind of take it easy and give yourself grace. Like we're all going through a really difficult time. I think it's, it's really important to realize that you're doing the best you can. And, um, the fact that you're thinking about making changes proves that you're a great mom. So yeah. that's what I would say. I, I think if my mom, my mom heard it, she would be walking in. Let me, let me tell you, I'm breathing. <laughs> I'm breathing really hard right now. <laughs> Well, and another thing is another thing we can do is like I mentioned a couple minutes ago is mo we're modeling behavior for our kids. And if you get to, if you find yourself to this point where you're just about to break, just being honest with your children and saying, you know, mommy needs to take a step away. I'm really angry. I need a couple minutes to myself. And when I get back, I'll be able to help you with this situation. And I think, um, you know, a lot of moms see that as like the kids are winning, 
but they're not. They're like, I, I think if you can show them that that's how you behave when you're really ramped up and fired up and triggered, then th you're modeling amazing behavior for your children and how to deal with anger. Anger is a real emotion. It's not, um, you know, it's something we're going to experience all our lives. It's something our children are going to experience, but we need to show them how, how best to react to anger. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh I love that. Yeah, because uh, <clears throat> believe it or not, your kids will be watching you. A hundred percent. And yeah. that's where they learn is by watching. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming, Brenna. It's been an incredible conversation. I had a great time. Thank you for having me. It's been fun. <laughs> Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for coming to the show. This is Live Coffee Talk every Wednesday at 8 o'clock Pacific time, where I bring you love, courage, and connection. And today we heard from Brenna Payne. Did I pronounce it right? Yep. <laughs> we heard from Brenna Payne, and she is a life coach working for parents, mom, struggling parents, if you need any support, please be, uh, be conscious and, and go, go and reach out to her, join her group. She has an incredible group and I'm in it. So that's support each other and let's get through life with better way of handling things. Definitely. You got this. You All can right. be a champion. Bye everyone. Have a great Wednesday. Bye.